Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that I was doing my lecture. I had to get my workout in for the day. Uh, I was just using my muscles, which I guess is kind of appropriate since we're going over the muscle system. So let's talk about what muscles can do for us. You can see there's a there's a quite a list here of things that muscles can do. They can you know respond to stimulus. They can receive stimulus from um, our environment and respond through our nervous system. They can contract. They can be stretched. They help us maintain our posture and provide us movement. I mean, without muscles, we wouldn't be able to move at all. And even like stabilizing joints, I need know for myself when I was running a lot, my knee joint would be really weak until I built up my my quad muscles to make sure that that was that joint was stabilized otherwise before that my knee was not um, real stable and it can also help generate heat now there are three types of muscle tissue it just a kind of review we're not going to go through all of them right now in fact cardiac muscle we're going to go over more when we talk about the heart and the skeletal muscle what we're going to talk about more today and then um, smooth muscle cells so cardiac muscle cells remember that they are branched, they are striated, and they tend to work in unison. Skeletal muscles, they are also striated, they have multiple nuclei, um, they can respond to stimulus, they are usually associated with the skeletal system, that's why they're skeletal muscles associated with um, bones. And then we have smooth muscle cells that tend to, they're not striated, and they are also involuntary, much like the cardiac muscles um, as well. So let's talk about skeletal muscle in a little bit more detail. The, remember the skeletal muscle is voluntary and so it's going to be important that we have a nerve supply that allows us to have control from sending messages from our brain down to our muscles to be able to move. And it's also going to have blood supply because we need to provide nutrients for the muscles but then also remove waste because there's a lot of waste like carbon dioxide and lactic acid and other waste products that can be built up on the muscles if it's, it's not removed so that the blood supply is going to help do that. There's also going to be connective tissue that covers the muscle at different levels. There's going to be over the whole muscle itself, and then in each one of these bundles that you see here, there's going to be connective tissue surrounding it. So it's it's a protective layer on each level. Now you probably have seen this before when you've had like um, like steak, for example, you have some pieces that kind of tear apart, and there's kind of some white stuff in there. That's that connective tissue that is left around those um, bundles in the in the muscle. So, and then, remember we said that there is going to be, uh, the skeletal muscle is associated with the skeleton. It's also going to have indirect or direct um, attachments, sometimes to those bones and then also to um, other types of tissue. So, let's look at the muscle cells or the muscular tissue at, at a more microscopic level. So, we have all these cylindrical, long cylindrical muscle cells that make up our muscles. And they contain different areas. So the remember that the skeletal muscle is striated and the striations come from these stripes of darker and lights, lighter areas that are found in the, the muscle cell itself. And there's going to be different parts to this that are going to be important that allow for contraction to take place. So we have in this area here we have the myosin and then these little blue lines here are the actin. These are going to be important parts of the contraction that are going to allow for the contraction to take place. Now actually before I get to that I want to show you this is a uh, microscopic view of muscle tissue, of skeletal muscle tissue, and you can see the striations in there. These correspond, like I said, with this I band and the A band, the lighter I band and the darker A band. That's what gives us the, stri the striated look of the skeletal muscle. Now I want you to look at this video here. Let me get started. So here we have so we have the the myofilaments. Here's the we have the myosin here and we have the actin here. So what happens is the myosin and actually myosin has multiple of these they're called heads to them where they're going to grab onto the actin and then I think in just a minute here they're going to it's going to shorten that area because the myosin head is going to bend. It's actually going to pull uh, on this, these actin fibers, or the actin filaments. So let's see here. Let's see, it's coming. Oh, there it goes. Oh, exciting. So that is pulling this actin filament. And so then what can happen is this myosin head is going to be released 
and that is going to need ATP or an energy molecule to release this. Muscles use a lot of energy, they don't really store a whole lot of energy, but then what can happen once it, that myosin has released, it can grab onto the active myosin again, or active filament again, and pull it even farther. So it can cause this contraction to take place. This is obviously going quite slow, but it can happen, um, it happens fairly quickly. And finally, let's talk about naming the skeletal muscles, because there's a variety of ways that they can be named. So, for example, the direction of the muscle fibers, rectus means straight, so these uh, muscles run in a straight line that are parallel to this imaginary line. The size of the muscle, like the gluteus maximus, is a larger rather than the gluteus minimus. And then we have the lo location that's usually associated with a bone, the number of origins, like um, biceps. Um, has two origins is it with a bi or triceps has three origins. The shape, the deltoid could, is in the shape of a triangle. The trapezius is in the shape of the, the, um, of the trapezoid. And then an action could be like um, the abductor that, or adductor group. So you remember adducting means it's kind of going towards the midline. So some of those uh, also help us with naming some of these skeletal muscle. Well, looks like I'm done with my lecture and I need to get back to pumping some iron because look at those they need some work